attribution indicates that the industry is built upon a foundation of knowledge and sharing that knowledge. Welcome to the Animal Training Fundamentals Podcast, where we have fun with practical application and we go deep into the science of behavior. Put them both together and you get results, solutions for challenges, and the tools you need to achieve your training goals. I'm your host, Barbara Heidenreich. Let's talk training. Welcome to another episode of the Animal Training Fundamentals Podcast. This one's going to be a little bit different. Do you like stories? Do you like being read to? I I do. (laughs) And one of the things that I worked really, really hard on, in fact, I probably spent about two years working on it off and on, was the freeing the crabs from the bucket presentation that I did for you all recently. It's a goat's presentation that's available on animaltrainingfundamentals.com. And I wrote an article that supports that presentation. And I thought, I'd actually read it to you. So this is going to be a series, and I'll read a little bit to you at a time. But if you want to get the actual download, you're going to want to visit atfgoats.com and register for that course there. You can actually watch the entire course, get the videos, and see all the graphics, and really enjoy the course there, as well as get the PDF download. But sit back and enjoy, because I'm going to read the article to you now. I'm super excited to share this article with you, so let's dive in. Freeing Crabs from the Bucket, Reaching Our Potential by Recognizing Others. I first presented this in February of 2024, and it was presented at the Global Online Animal Training Series, which is a series of presentations that I host at AnimalTrainingFundamentals.com. I'm going to start with the abstract. So the metaphor of crabs in a bucket vividly depicts the practice of hindering others' progress or success to propel oneself forward, which ultimately holds back the entire group. This metaphor is particularly relevant to the training and behavior industry. This in-depth commentary discusses the importance of crediting intellectual property, defining plagiarism, and highlighting its impact on individuals and the entire industry. It also addresses common challenges and misconceptions about proper citation and credit options and provides valuable resources to help individuals learn how to attribute intellectual property appropriately. By freeing the crabs from the bucket and allowing them to fulfill their potential, practitioners can advance the animal training industry and freely contribute to a diverse world of information sharing. So learn how promoting ethical practices and supporting the work of our predecessors can create a brighter future for animal trainers and the industry. So that's my overall picture of this entire paper, and uh, we're going to dive into it a little bit more now. So we're going to start with the introduction. So for me, crabs are really stupendous creatures. There's a vast diversity of species. Some can climb walls, others inhabit abandoned shells, you know, those hermit crabs, and one species is strong enough to lift a coconut. Some of them can be poisonous, and some of them are just really strikingly colorful. They're just beautiful. They can be super tiny like our human fingernails, or they can be just incredibly large like a 40-pound Um, crab with long spindly legs. (laughs) And I know when I'm a beachcomber, I'm super delighted to see them scurry in the sands and I look for them in tide pools. And there are people who take deep dives into frigid waters to marvel at spectacular specimens. So these crustaceans are unique, wondrous animals from which there is so much to learn. However, when they're placed under pressure, disturbing responses can be observed that have led to this curious metaphor for human behavior. So we've got this metaphor, crabs in a bucket, and it's come to describe the practice of holding others back to propel oneself forward. However, in the process, the entire group just can't move forward. So the exact origin of this phrase is unclear but it does vividly illustrate the concept of people hindering each other's progress or success due to maybe envy, competition, or from a lack of awareness or support. 
Moreover, the visual is really compelling. You can picture a bottomless bucket of numerous crabs piled on top of each other trying to escape this really aversive situation. Grabbing onto one or another crab or two may provide leverage to lift a single individual toward the top of the bucket. However, the other crabs, well, they're not really vol voluntary participants in the ascent of the ambitious climber. Furthermore, every crab is clamoring to ascend and escape. Those on the bottom also climb upwards using others as leverage. As another creature maneuvers to reach the top of the bucket, everyone tumbles back down into the struggling mass. This every crab for themselves approach creates an environment where no crab reaches the top. This metaphor has been used to illustrate human behavior in numerous environments, probably because it has that strong visual imagery and it's super vivid. However, it's really especially relevant to the world of animal training and behavior. It provides an excellent segue into a long overdue discussion on plagiarism and its impact on the animal training industry. So getting ahead without proper recognition of intellectual property has far reaching effects beyond the individual. And this requires some defining of what plagiarism is. It's also essential to identify why supporting crediting predecessors works benefits individuals and the industry and how plagiarism is harmful. So according to an article by the Harvard Graduate School of Education, the ease of access to online information has made it easier for students to plagiarize, and it has also led to confusion about proper citation practices. However, it's also opened the door to many resources to help people learn how to attribute intellectual property appropriately. And we're going to explore all of these to demonstrate how crediting the works of others advances the animal training industry. So even though this crabs in a bucket metaphor portrays a bleak outlook, we have to remember that behavior is occasioned by stimulus conditions and the outcomes it produces. So we can free those crabs from the bucket and allow them to fulfill their potential as exceptional, unique creatures who contribute to our diverse world by changing a few things. So we're going to get into that more. So first of all, we need to define plagiarism. What is plagiarism? Plagiarism is intentionally or unintentionally presenting or using someone else's work, ideas, images, words, technology, or data from any source as one's own original work without giving proper credit or acknowledgement. It involves copying, paraphrasing, or using another person's creative or intellectual work without authorization or citation. Plagiarism is considered unethical and a breach of academic or professional integrity. Using or reproducing someone else's work without proper credit, permission, licensing, or citations constitutes plagiarism. Examples of plagiarism include, but are not limited to copying the work of another verbatim without using quotation marks, revising the work of another by making only minor word changes without explanation, attribution, licensing, or citation, and paraphrasing the work of another without the appropriate citation. Um, I'm not going to list all the citations as I read all this, but again, if you go to atfgoats.com, you can download this paper and, um, and you'll have all the references that I use to create this document here. We're going to take a little break to give you your first secret word. And the secret word is unintentional. Secret words are important to remember and submit to show you have listened to this podcast for your professional development. All right, back to the program. So the Council of Writing Program Administrator, <laughs> Administrators, there we go, distinguishes between deliberate plagiarism and careless or inadequate attribution. So the latter is hypotheses to result from a lack of knowledge of on providing attribution, how to do it, or the culture not supporting the practice, and also from no accountability when attribution is missing. Where it seems to be most prevalent in contemporary animal training is the use of behavior ideas, 
procedures, specific techniques, technology, environmental designs, props, educational material, images, videos. We see people lifting images and videos a lot. Um, and equipment for which there is no credit to the original developer of that idea. And just like in other professions, there shouldn't have to be a legal patent or copyright. Um, you know, that doesn't need to be required for work to get proper attribution. If an idea has already appeared in print, shared in a professional setting, in the media of any sort, or been a part of, per of a personal communication, and it's not the original idea of that author who is trying to present that information, it can be appropriately credited to the original source. Unfortunately, in the animal training community, there seems to be a bit of an attitude that ideas developed fall into this realm of public domain. However, like any profession, often but not always, the ideas are developed by practitioners, and they're built upon a foundation of knowledge, experience, and in this case, they're also backed by a hard science that relies upon the standard practice of proper attribution and years of scientific research. So for us to continue to align the animal training industry with evidence-based practices means following the appropriate application of crediting sources and building upon the knowledge that precedes one's own. Animal trainers and the field would greatly benefit from gaining fluency in this skill set. Time for your second secret word, and the secret word is integrity. Let's get back to the program. So now I'd like to talk about reasons to support proper attribution. We've already discussed what is plagiarism. So now let's talk about some benefits. Supporting proper attribution is more than just a nice thing to do. There are many, many benefits to the industry, to practitioners, to content, content creators, and to the original author. According to an article published in the American Society of Journalists and Authors, um, their, according to their website, proper attribution is crucial in maintaining the integrity of writing. Proper attribution adds legitimacy, credibility, and professionalism to the industry. It can continue moving animal training from a hobby or this incidental incidental activity um, to this essential component of optimal welfare for animals in managed care. It demonstrates that animal training is based on a hard science and our practical application. Attribution indicates that the industry is built upon a foundation of knowledge and sharing that knowledge. And according to the University of Maryland, um, proper attribution also allows for documentation of the history of the development of information and ideas. This provides a better understanding of past accomplishments and facilitates that self-correcting pro progression of the scientific process. So proper attribution provides a research trail of intellectual property that allows original authors to be contacted and consulted so mistakes are not repeated, questions can be asked, and practitioners can build upon the foundation prepared by those who have preceded them. And according to the University of Texas Libraries, proper attribution encourages professionals to work together towards common goals, and it also supports transparency. When a community embraces, embraces proper attribution, people can more readily share those ideas, knowing that their intellectual property and contributions are protected. Proper attribution also creates a trail of the work accomplished in the animal training field. Much of the historical record of animal training is now being recorded in a wide variety of outlets from social media to learning platforms. This content is a vital record to document. The more practitioners learn to reference material properly, the better the industry can source these crucial contributions. Individuals who use proper attributions demonstrate integrity and show that their work is supported by the contributions of others who have come before them. Extensive, extensive literature and other reviews utilized by content creators can help lift our interest, industry by sharing the work of others. This can expose others to more relevant material that can encourage even more professional development. All right, there you go. That is the end of 
part one of our podcast on the power of proper attribution. We covered what is plagiarism and how giving proper attribution benefits our industry. Of course, there's much more to come. If you can't wait for more, you can go to atfgoats.com right now and take the course and download the entire PDF. Uh, well, next week, we're going to be covering how not giving proper attribution is harmful to the industry and some of the challenges that have making been making it difficult for us to give proper attribution. So there's much, much more to come. Hang in there. Thanks for joining me on this episode and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. If you liked what you heard today, visit AnimalTrainingFundamentals.com for more quality content on animal training. You'll find courses, community, and extensive video examples from my consulting work around the world. We'd love to have you join our force-free family.